So in the previous video, we went over how to tie in dumbbell eyes and how to orient them to get the hook to swim the way you want it to swim. You guys loved that video, by the way. So we decided to make this video two parts. And in this video, we're going to build a head around the dumbbell eyes with like deer hair and laser dub and a craft fur brush. Yeah, this is, this is golden. So before we get started jumping into this video on building heads around dumbbell eyes, we're going to give away the fly or something new for the comments in the previous video. So the random comment generator picked Dan Lee. Dan, shoot me an email or shoot me a message on Instagram, whatever you want to do, and I'll send out a care package for you that may or may not include the next thing I'm going to show you guys. For your chance to win the next thing I'm going to show you guys, <laughs> like and comment on this video and I will pick a random comment on, from the random comment generator. It's just a number generator on Google. That, that's really all it is. And I'll send you some of these so yeah so as a segue into this dumbbell eye with heads over them type of fly i thought it would bring in my newest design with montana fly company over the last couple of years i've worked on a smaller knucklehead pattern that is a little bit more um smaller trout specific uh digs a little deeper maybe you're greatest smallmouth fly ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't say that. I really can't say that. But um, fantastic little smallmouth fly, great striper fly. This is the next in the line of the Knucklehead series, and it's the Knuckle Deep. <laughs> so I literally just got the Montana fly samples for the Knuckle Deep for that's going to drop in 2022 spring of 2022 so contact your local fly shop and tell them hey get wise's knuckle deep into the fly shop or i will never shop here again no no don't do that i'm just playing you know hope you guys don't take half of what i say seriously except for the tying part of things because i'm kind of good at that i and I, i'm i'm really excited to have another fly Picked up by Montana Fly Company. I, I really, really dig Montana Fly Company and how they tie their flies. I mean, and look at the list of streamer tires that they are pushing. It's, it's, to be a part of those, to be a part of those designers is like the craziest thing in my mind. I just can't, I just can't wrap my head around that. So, yeah. So on a side note for the Knuckle Deep, after the holidays, I will be doing a limited run of one-off kind of colors. There, I mean, they could be these colors, um, uh, but we're gonna add different colors to this selection that Montana Fly has picked up, but I'm gonna tie them. Keep an eye on my Instagram because I'm gonna let everyone know when I'm going to start taking orders for uh, the flies that I tie myself. Like I said, it's gonna be a limited run um, not just a whole ton of flies, you know, several dozen. Um, but then, you know, I'm, I'm done and I'm going to let Montana fly take over. So, uh, watch my Instagram. I'll let you guys know whenever I decide to drop that limited run and I'll start taking orders and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get a bunch of flies out to you guys. So, yeah. Also on the package opening front, uh, I'm, I've, I've kind of pushed that off to the side. I wasn't sure if that was something you guys were digging or not, but I gotta show you something. I mean, there's, they're, they're creased a little bit because I've been wearing them. <laughs> I mean, come, come on. So Catch Flow has a, a bunch of different kinds of shoes. They've got, they even have like shoes that have like vices on them and stuff. So it's not only fly fishing related, but it's fly tying related. Um, they're awesome. They're really, really cool. These are, these are synthetic leather. You know, they're not, they're not real leather. Come on, who, that's a pain. So they're super easy to clean. They just wipe off. 
I just bought a pair of chucks that are like the synthetic leather chucks, and um, they're these are ten times more comfortable. I literally just took this shoe off because I was wearing it. It, it to. <laughs> So, so for what those catch flow shoes, so for what the catch flow shoes are, they're super affordable. And, uh, and like I said, they are like neck and neck, almost the same price as Chuck's. Uh, it's, a, it's a no brainer, uh, no brainer in my eyes. And, and it kind of, and like, and like I showed you, it kind of matches my tattoo. Uh, it's, it's a thing, it's a thing. So to order your pair of the catch flow shoes, and like I said, they've got a bunch of different kinds. I might even scroll through and show you some of this stuff. It's not gimmicky. It's like really high end made, very well made. I, I, I don't, I don't just throw backing behind stuff. I'm never ever gonna do that. Um, especially shoes because gosh, I, I, again, I love shoes. I just love them. <laughs> But use code FFTO10, Fly Fishing the Ozarks 10, at Catchflow. There will be a link in the description of this video, and and they'll give you they'll give you a percentage off, and uh, yeah, so kind of fun. I just sit there and play with flies. I just pet them. Is that weird? That's weird. I, it's weird. So in the previous video, we went over dumbbell eyes, the different kinds of dumbbell eyes from the lead eyes to the eyeballs with a Z uh, and, and aluminum C eyes, uh, just, just different kinds of eyes that you can put on flies that aren't like the sticky eyes. They're like a little bit of weight to them. And I promised you that I would make a second video on building a head around these dumbbell eyes. So you've seen this technique in like Gallup Sex Dungeon and Granado's Sasquatch. Uh, it's it, it's nothing new, but there are some little intricate things that will help you along the way with different styles of these heads. So we're gonna cover a laser dub head, a craft fur brush head, and a deer hair head. Now we're not gonna go into super, super detail because I'm pretty sure we have a tying tips video for almost all of this material, like the laser dub and the craft fur brush and the deer hair. So, you know, you can check those videos out for a lot more in-depth information. And, I'll, and again, I'll have those videos in the description of this video. But we're gonna build the heads around these dumbbell eyes. So first we're gonna build a head out of laser dub. In the last few years, I've really, really enjoyed building heads out of laser dub, uh, especially in this style. It's super easy, super easy to trim. It, it's just great. If you haven't seen the laser dub tying tips video, I will put a link in the description of this video. I would highly recommend going to watch that video. Um, it gives you a little bit more intricate details on how to work with laser dub, whereas this is just gonna be a quick overview on how to you know, build a head over dumbbell eyes. So as you can tell, I have my eyes on the underneath side of the fly, keeping this fly swimming like it looks now. It's gonna be hook point down. This is the way the fly is gonna swim, so we want the darker colored Sinyo's laser dub on top and the lighter color on bottom. The one with black and white here. Since I want the top to kind of envelop the bottom part, I'm actually going to start on the bottom. So I'm going to invert the fly, grab the white. We're going to have less material on the bottom of this. So, so like I said, this is an inverted already. Uh, we want less amount of material on the underside of this hook. So I'm going to go with a, you know, a a smaller clump of laser dub, I'm gonna tie it 50-50, meaning I'm literally gonna go 50% going this way, 50% going that way. So, right dead in the middle, right? Tighten down, give it one more wrap just to secure, and then without moving the thread forward, we're gonna go ahead and invert, no, revert. <laughs> I have no idea what that's called. Then we're gonna go with the black now. Okay, so as you can tell, we're using, I mean, it's not double, but it's probably a third more material on top than we are on the bottom. So when I lay this down, and we're, we're going 50-50 again. When I lay this down, I wanna kinda push this material down kind of around, starting to go around the, the laser dub on bottom. So we're gonna push down just a little bit, hold, loose wrap, just to grab it, tight wrap, 
everything's in here now. We're gonna fold all this back and tighten it down. Next, we're gonna invert again and we're gonna go literally right in front of the eyes, as close as we can possibly get to the eyes. We're back here with our thread, up against the post of the eye. We're gonna go with the same amount of laser dub that we did the last time. So our thread is right dead in front of the eyes. We're gonna lay our laser dub right over the eyes. And you wanna angle your thread back to pull this, to pull these fibers toward the eyes. So at this point, depending on how much hook shank you have left, you can put another smaller clump of black and white. Um, you can do, this is where you can like add a different little pop of color. If you wanted to do uh, another black up here and a little red on bottom, um, that's where laser dub is, it, it just shines, absolutely shines, where you can, you can blend colors really easily. Um, I'm gonna be boring and just add another little clump of black and white. <laughs> So what you'll notice in the laser dub tips video is I'm always gonna brush this out. Just always give it a really, really good brush out. At this point you can trim, you can, um, you can leave it like it is, it's, it's totally up to you. So I'm pretty sure that 100% my, my favorite way to build a head around dumbbell eyes is with a craft fur brush. Nick Granado's Sasquatch Fly is where I really started to appreciate craft fur brushes as a head. To this day, I still love, I love a craft fur brush. We're gonna tie in with as little of a footprint as possible on this craft fur brush. So we don't want a bunch of wire showing. We want smooth. I'm gonna pull these fibers back as far as I can. I want as many fibers on one side of the brush as I can get. I'm gonna make a wrap. And constantly, constantly folding fibers back, pulling fibers back. Every time you move it, you're pulling fibers back. Just constant. When you get to this point, what's gonna happen is this thick part of the craft for brush needs to bounce off the last wrap. It needs to actually hit it and roll off of it just a little bit. So you kind of want to angle it back just a little bit until it gets to the point where you can you can kind of tell that it's it's hitting the previous wrap. Again, folding all material back as you go. Okay, so right now, part of this wrap is on my previous wrap. So what I'm going to do is barely move this forward with my hand. So instead of pulling back super far this way, I'm barely gonna move this forward with my hand and give it a little wiggle. <laughs> just to wiggle it, you know, just a little bit. If this is the first wrap, you wanna barely pull it over, and then when you wiggle it, it's gonna go bump and fall right into place. At this point, I am butted up against the eyes. Now I have to do something different. So I'm gonna go over the eyes, Pull all these fibers back. And since I have a thick, thick brush, I really don't have to do anything else. You know, you can do figure eights and stuff like that if you have a skinny little baby brush. <laughs> Keep pulling these fibers back really hard. And you want everything to butt up against the last wrap as close as it possibly can, and you're constantly stroking these fibers back. Constantly, constantly stroking these fibers back. Okay, so once you get to the point of tying off, I'm gonna kinda separate these fibers from the last wrap as much as I can, just so I don't have as much to, to deal with whenever I whenever I have to tie off. Couple good strong tying down wraps. Pull all these fibers back really, really hard. 
and then tie off right behind the eye. So at this point, we're whip finished. Um, we're gonna brush this out really, really well. Sideways, forward, backwards. A little bit of everything. So at this point, again, the eyes are on the underside of the hook. This fly is gonna ride exactly how you see it now. So we want more material on top of the hook than we do on the bottom of the hook. So what I'm gonna do is cut the bottom part almost flat. So I'm gonna invert it. And I'm gonna cut this just barely above the eyes at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm gonna trim out the eyes themselves. So next I wanna make this head into a sweeping head. I want, I want some longer fibers to help me blend the head into the body. So I'm gonna cut this a little shorter than the back. I'm actually gonna, probably not gonna touch the back at all. Kinda of brush it back to see where I'm at. So the whole time that I'm trimming this, I'm using the eye as a guard. I'm resting my scissors on the eye of the hook and just trimming and moving the fly as I need to and then I can change my angle and it's gonna cut a little bit more change the angle a little bit more and it's gonna cut until it all blends in great looking head on a fly so if I were a betting man I would say the main reason most of you are here is to see how to build a deer hair head around dumbbell eyes so again just like we've done the whole time on this video this fly is gonna ride hook point down because we have put the eyes on the underneath side of the hook. I wanna put a collar on this. Nothing huge, nothing fancy. Just a deer hair collar. We want all this to stay on top of the hook. So we're gonna force this to stay up here. We're gonna give it a loose wrap and then a tight wrap and we're gonna bind it down while we hang on with this hand. We don't want it to spin. Binding it down, everything stays on top of the hook. I just cleaned the studio too, and I'm gonna do deer hair. Oh, not my smartest move. So we're gonna move the head forward now. Cut off big chunks of deer hair. So I'm gonna stack on top and bottom. Nothing hard about this. So as you can tell, once you hit this point, the deer here wants to go ahead and cover over the eyes. Like right in here and right under here. So we're gonna pull this back as much as we can, move our thread forward. And again, just like we did with the craft fur, we want the thread to be as far back on the hook shank as we can be, but still in front of the eyes right now. So you can tell this is where my eye stops and you can see my thread hanging just barely behind it because it's touching the post that it's tied in on. We want to fill as much of this as we possibly can. So we want one more stack on top, one more stack on bottom. And again, I'm going to pull my thread. And again, I've got my thread wrapped around this. Once, I'm gonna pull my thread back toward the eyes just to cinch it down even closer to the eye, as close as I possibly can to that eye. Loads, loads of thread pressure. Invert and do one more time. Every, every time I do these videos, I make these flies a little bit more grandiose and bigger than they really need to be. Uh, this head is this head is almost popper body thick head. <laughs> yeah. So 
so that about wraps up the dumbbell eyes and the dumbbell eyes head couple videos. If you're a streamer tire at all, this is a technique you have to learn. You have to, you have to be able to wrap your head around being able to do this stuff to tie a lot, a lot of flies that are out there already and to build flies that haven't been seen yet.